Joe Miller is uh, our second favorite at uh, the Show Me Institute. David Stokes, of course, being our favorite. But Joe comes in. You're a Show Me Institute policy analyst, and you look at all sorts of things. Before we talk about your new topic, you had an interesting uh, column or story um, about the convention center slash property rates and values around the area. And on social media, I somebody was saying how the new football stadium is going to be a boon for property taxes. And I said, check out Joe Miller's post. And he explains how 60% of the property around the dome is tax exempt. So if you're expecting a property tax bonanza, think again with the new stadium. Uh, well, so not all of it's tax exempt, but it's basically tax frozen, if you know what I mean. So okay. a lot of it is tax exempt. A lot of it is um, either government property, which you're not really going to get any property taxes off of that, right. or it's um, or it's nonprofits. But there's also the the TIF districts that are all around it and the tax abatements. <laughs> and what that basically means is that you you freeze you freeze the tax rate at what it was before, and everything that 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 increases the increment goes back to fund the property. So right. you don't really get to keep that. And and based on the city's uh, track record, they do pretty much abate everything that comes into the city. <laughs> so I mean, Ballpark Village got a, a, a seven, tax, abatement, tax yeah. abatement. So you really can't expect property taxes to surge for the city around the area. Which is really funny because so so ballpark village gets a property tax abatement and then puts other businesses out of business who are actually paying the property tax i mean the wash on washington avenue places that we've also given tax abatements to they're, they're complaining that some of their business has been taken away yeah and you know i mean people always talk about with the stadiums it's like well what about the cardinals it's like even across the street from the cardinal stadium where they play 80 plus games a year and, and people really like the cardinals right. they still had to do a tax abatement I mean, in the Central West End, they just did TIF on two properties, which no one could claim were blighted. I mean, I live across the street from one. It's not blighted. <laughs> and uh, that received a tax payment. In the Central West End. In yeah. the Central West End. So, I mean, you know, property taxes base is just hollowed out in this city. And if you think that's going to be what makes the stadium worthwhile, it's just not the case. Uh, and then uh, what about, what are your, uh, this wasn't on the agenda, but um, Square coming in, getting an IPO mm. worth $6 billion. They don't want to buy their own equipment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> so not only are they going into a TIF district, so they don't, they don't even have to get a TIF on their real property because they're going into a district that already has it. But then that, that's what this is all about, evading real property or not real property, but just general property taxes because equipment can be expensive. So the city's leasing it to them. So city technically <laughs> owns the property, so they don't have to pay property taxes on that. So the reason why yeah. they didn't get a TIF was because they were already, the whole region's getting yeah. a TIF. The whole area they're moving <laughs> into. Yeah, so they tip. couldn't get a TIF because they already got one. So they had to get something else. Listen, what about homeowners? When do homeowners yeah, get TIFs? Yeah, I hear you. All <laughs> right. What's coming up? You, you're, you, We actually invited you here to talk about, they're talking about renovating the convention center. Mm-hmm. So we, some people have known about this for a while, and uh, we've written about it before, and even the Post-Dispatch has written about this before, that you, know, you don't just get to leave the convention center as is. It needs re the dome needs renovations, probably about $100 million, whatever happens to the Rams. And the convention center itself wants $100 million in renovation. So that's an extra $200 million. And that's, that's a separate from and beyond what we're talking of $400 million for a right. stadium. Okay. Let me just say, so even if the Rams stay and even if they build this new stadium, you still need upgrades to the current dome and the convention center. Yeah, and it, it's $200 million, and, and there's, <laughs> there's not going to be some sort of private investor doing that. That's going to be public money from somebody. So why don't they just write a tiff? Why don't they just <laughs> give it away? I mean, so where is this two hundred million coming from? Well, that's a that's a good question because if you look at the city, the city is already carrying about four hundred million dollars worth of debt for the existing uh, convention center and the Edward, including the Edward Jones Dome. And that means the city's paying probably between seventeen and twenty two million dollars. I thought on I thought this was going to be paid off in like twenty twenty. Not the convention center part of it. Oh. The convention center, there's $17 million a year in debt payment on the convention center until 2039. So wow. that's a long time. We're, that we're, story hasn't been reported. <laughs> Yeah, right? I that's mean, that's that's been under under known. Yeah, well, it's it's in the city's uh, it's on the city's website. They've got they that's how long it goes because they constantly make improvements to it because 
I mean, if you've gone to other cities, and I, I was just in Chicago last weekend, and you go to the convention center, everybody is in this huge convention center arms race to build a bigger and better and nicer building. And, it, and the cycle is not once every 30 years we build a convention center. It's once every 10 years we do hundreds of millions of dollars in upgrades to our convention center. And that debt piles up. And it far exceeds any of the revenue sources that are supposed to pay for it. So in St. Louis, there's a 7% tax altogether on hotels and a 1% tax on restaurants that goes to the convention center in the dome. Okay. That raises about $14 million a year. And we're talking between 17 and $22 million a year in payments. So you can guess the money's just coming out of general taxes. All right. So this 200 million is going to, if they're, if it's already losing money and they're taking money out of general funds to pay off the current bonds, how are they going to get this new money, considering didn't Moody's just downgrade the, the, the ratings? Uh, yes, they, they did. The suspicion is, and, and this comes out in some of the, in the, in the business journal article, the St. Louis Business Journal article, is, is the county is now in talks with the, with, the, with the convention center, the visitors and convention center, or commission here. And basically, this, the county was helping to pay for the dome with a hotel tax right. of about 3.5 of 3.5 percent there's their tax is going to retire quote unquote <laughs> uh in 2021 right so you can guess somebody somebody's got some money open up and we actually were talking about this when when earlier on when the dome when the issue with the dome and the riverfront stadium was coming up and we always knew it's going to be at least 100 million dollars to renovate the dome and where's that money coming from well you know there's one, the state's going to pay a lot of money for a riverfront stadium. The city's going to pay a lot of money for a riverfront stadium. The county's dropping out, but hey, look, there's something else that you can help pay for it if you believe in regionalism. All right, <laughs> let me ask you this question, Joe Miller, show me Institute Policy Analyst. Let's say they didn't do anything. Let's say they didn't build the convention center. They didn't put the tax on the hotels and motels. They didn't put the tax on the meals and the restaurants. Guess what? You would have had a hollowed out core and it would have been a disaster the last 20 years if that convention center wasn't there bringing in new people. Well, I'm not sure that's actually true because when they made the expansion to the convention center in, in 1995 and then included the dome and they did a lot of stuff in the convention center, they they they, they basically subsidized the, the Renaissance Hotel, mm -hmm. the convention center hotel. And, you know, um, convention goers really didn't increase very much in St. Louis. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of action there. There wasn't, there wasn't the population growth. Population of the city continued to decline. I mean, maybe the city was slightly better. But, you know, at the Show Me Institute, I sit around a lot and, and I read these economic development reports. And I rarely see any project that the city or the state wants to spend money on where they don't say that there's some massive, massive return. And when most, I mean, probably about uh, close to half of the city's debt is tied up in convention centers, mm. we have to start asking ourselves, is this the area where St. Louis is going to, has the competitive advantage, is going to gain the competitive advantage? Why is this an industry that the city has to be so financially involved in? Aren't there all sorts of other businesses that drive the growth of cities? Why is it that we need this expensive convention center? Uh, the convention center and the people who are in the know, including the governor's task force on the new stadium, says, Joe Miller, when you build a new billion-dollar stadium, that frees up the convention center and the dome to book bigger and better conventions that we can't book now. So just wait and see all these great conventions that are going to come to town the minute we have the availability. Well, a lot of cities are building bigger and better convention centers. I don't know that we have a competitive advantage in that. I don't know that $100 million gives us any competitive advantage in that. What I do know is that when the NFL isn't playing in St. Louis, that dome is not booked 24 seven. Should we expect it to be booked 24 seven when they leave? But they will argue that you can't, these are booked three, four years in advance, five and the NFL and the NFL schedule comes out, you know, three months in advance, four months in advance. Well, to be, the, the NFL isn't playing in, in July ever. And you know, they're not booked at, they're not booked 24 seven then. And you know, the question is, is, are we really, what are we really gaining from all of this? Is this something that, is this something that's really gonna boost the city? I mean, is, is conventions going to be something that really drives the growth of downtown or do we wanna have a system where 
people are allowed to spend the money how they want to spend the money. The city looks for more opportunistic, possibly cheaper investments, and maybe gets out of an arms race that we can't afford and we're never going to get ahead in. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Miller, I'm sure you have stuff up on the Show Me Institute website. Uh, yes, we do. You can see everything we've got at showmeinstitute.org. Did you take Uber over here today? Did you break the law and <laughs> no. take Uber? Well, it's not against the law yet. I mean, the, the inju- they They're trying. The injunction's not through yet. Yes. Uh, how did you get here since, yeah. since you don't have a car? I took the Metrolink today. You green liberal. <laughs> you. Uh, Joe Miller, thanks for coming in, my friend. Thanks for having me. 848 here, Big 550, K.